Tonewheel 2.0 is an interactive installation that aims to teach users about the fundamental music-related concepts of electromagnetic induction and timbre. But to really understand what the installation is about, we need to talk about the Hammond organ. This is Booker T. Jones playing his song Green Onions on a Hammond B3 organ. The tune has become something of an anthem for the instrument. The Hammond organ was developed by engineer and inventor Lawrence Hammond in the early 1930s as an alternative to larger, more expensive traditional pipe organs. Over the years, Hammond organs have been used in jazz, blues, rock and beyond, with players including George Gershwin, Jimmy Smith, Keith Emerson, The Allman Brothers, Beatles, Pink Floyd, Genesis, Mike Oldfield, Crowded House, The White Stripes, Radiohead, Corey Henry, and that's barely scratching the surface. Anytime you've heard that classic, groovy organ sound on a pop or rock record, there's a good chance it was played on a Hammond. Central to the workings of the Hammond organ is the principle of electromagnetic induction. Based on the laws of Faraday and Lenz, it states that a changing magnetic field will produce a voltage in a nearby wire. Due to the conservation of energy, the voltage results in a current acting to oppose the changing magnetic field that created it. In practical terms, this means that we can either induce or reproduces vibration, an electric signal that represents sound. This is at the basis of most loudspeakers and many microphones. It is also the key to pickups, like those in an electric guitar, which contain a magnet and coil of wire and turn a disturbance in the magnetic field into an electric sound signal. If you get to the heart of a Hammond organ, this is what you'll find. A set of mechanically driven steel discs with bumpy edges spinning at various speeds next to a number of pickups. These discs are tone wheels. Here's an explanation of how they work taken from a manual for the Hammond M-series organs. Each tone wheel is a steel disc similar to a gear with teeth on its edge. As the wheel rotates, these teeth pass near a permanent magnet, and the resulting variations in the magnetic field induce a voltage in a coil wound on the magnet. This voltage produces one note of the musical scale, its pitch depending on the number of teeth passing the magnet each second. In our installation, the tone wheels are not hidden away, but placed front and center and driven by a hand crank. Equally visible are the electric guitar pickups beneath the tone wheels, allowing the user to see where the sound they make is coming from and to witness the magic of electromagnetic induction. But there's more to the Hammond's tone wheel system than just that. Notice when Jones flicks these switches leading to a much brighter pipe organ-like sound. These are draw bars and they adjust the proximity of the pickups in the organ to the tone wheels, thus making the sound from those tone wheels quieter or louder. You see, when we hear a note on any instrument, we're hearing a lot more than just the pitch frequency of that note. We hear the timbre or sonic quality of that instrument, and this stems from the amount of other frequencies present with the fundamental pitch frequency. These other frequencies, termed partials, overtones, or, if they're whole number multiples of the fundamental, harmonics, are what give different instruments their unique sound. Hammond's ambitions for the control of timbre with draw bars were bold. Here's that manual again. A note played on the organ consists of a fundamental pitch and a number of harmonics, or multiples of the fundamental frequency. The fundamental and eight harmonics available on each playing key are controllable by means of draw bars. By suitable adjustment of these controls, the player may vary the tone colours at will. In our installation, we've used gearing and a varied number of teeth on the tone wheels to produce the fundamental and three harmonics, each an octave above the previous one. Since octaves correspond to a doubling of frequency, we have two shapes of tone wheel, one with double the number of teeth of the other. One of each type of tone wheel is on each shaft and one shaft spins four times faster than the other, such that the tone wheel with fewer teeth on the fast shaft still has double the number of teeth passing the pickup each second as the tone wheel with more teeth on the slow shaft. In place of draw bars, we have guitar style volume knobs for each pickup, thus allowing the user to start to vary the timbre. We don't stop at just three harmonics, however. We also have an iPad interface that wirelessly controls some of the audio processing code on the computer that the installation is connected to. Via this simple interface, the user can pan the various harmonics and can add additional artificial harmonics generated by the computer. These allow for a much broader range of sounds for the user to experiment with, and hopefully they'll start to better understand how timbre works. As well as running the code, 
The computer also primarily acts as a display on which we plot both the frequency content of sound generated by the user and the wave shape, which shows the sound signal over time. Here's a direct side-by-side -side comparison of Tonewheel 2.0 without computerized harmonics and with them. But our interface doesn't just let you add harmonics and pan them. You can also adjust the overall volume level and users can record snippets of the sound they make. But we also couldn't not add effects. These are all based on tutorials or existing modules within Max MSP, the visual programming language we used for audio processing in this installation. We have a distortion, which behaves differently for low, mid and high frequencies, so the level of each distorted frequency band can be adjusted from the interface. We also have reverb, which can make Tonewheel 2.0 sound a bit ghost-like, or perhaps like a gust of wind. Users can adjust the length of the reverb time, leading to some pretty extreme results. Lastly, and perhaps most interestingly, we have Chorus which modulates the frequency of a copy of the signal and blends it back with the original, making it sound like multiple voices. See, an early complaint of the Hammond organ is that it sounded too artificial, too dull. It lacked the tuning imperfections of a real pipe organ that would come from changes in air temperature and humidity. Hammond tried to rectify this with a vibrato and later a chorus effect for their organs. In fact, Hammond were the first to patent various dedicated chorus and vibrato effects units that were built into their organs. I don't have time to explain in detail the ingenious ways this was achieved, but one common solution was actually to hook up a Hammond to a Leslie speaker cabinet, which used a spinning horn tweeter and rotating baffles in front of the woofer to achieve frequency modulation. Many Hammond organs included a switch to make the Leslie's effect more or less extreme, and we can see Brooker T. Jones using this in his performance. On our chorus, users have standard control of the rate and depth, leading to the following sounds. For me, this is where Tonewheel 2.0 really starts to resemble the classic Hammond sound. Arriving at our final installation was not a simple journey. In the early stages, we had to determine how to best make our own tone wheels. We tried a more simple polygon cut from steel sheet, we tried a motorcycle gear train, we even tried steel cookie cutters. Initial testing was carried out using a single guitar pickup connected to garage band on an iPhone, and gradually test rigs began to resemble an overall structure. We hand cut and sanded the final tone wheels with the aid of a bandsaw and some files. The acrylic and MDF used to make the final housing were all laser cut. The gears were generated using SolidWorks Toolbox ISO spur gears, and they enable an overall gear ratio of 15 to 1 for the slow shaft and 60 to 1 for the fast shaft. For more information about the build process, how our code works, the project work distribution, future improvements, and more sounds from our installation, please take a look at my portfolio page. And of course, thanks for watching.